Welcome back to Saturday Morning Ultimate Spider-Man. It's time to get into Volume 7, where we're gonna meet some of the Yuxmen. But if you don't know what this is, this is the Complete Story Series, where we take your favorite trade paperbacks and we break them down into digestible bites, allowing you to recap your favorite storylines in an interesting and dramatic manner, because we add in music, and we add in funny voices, and we add in sound effects. And if you like this, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. But, moving on with Spider-Man. In our last video, Peter Parker battled against Eddie Brock wearing the Venom suit. After Eddie was electrified and turned into a bubbling pile of goo, he did manage to escape. Now with Eddie nowhere to be found, Peter sat alone wondering what else in his life could possibly go wrong. As class begins for Peter, he sits in his chair wondering just how is it he's going to get a new costume. With his run in with Eddie, he's now left costumeless. But since he got his original costume from wrestling, maybe he can go get another. All of these thoughts begin to pass through his head and Mary Jane stares at him and she scribbles in her notebook. What's the matter? And she nudges Peter. After reading it, Peter scowls, writing back, What do you care? The two go back and forth until finally Peter writes, If you really cared, why are we not together? But before Mary Jane can respond, the teacher grabs her and Peter's notebooks and starts to read the conversation to the class. Everyone begins to laugh at them and Gwen whispers to Peter, Oh, dude. Once class is over, Peter heads out, but before he can leave, Flash stomps him, asking if he has a minute. Peter looks around and doesn't see anyone in the hallways and asks for what? Is he just going to try to pull some prank so that everyone can laugh at him? Flash tells him no, he uh, needs to talk to him outside for a sec. Peter thinks about it for a moment and then says, You know what? No. Everyone's probably outside waiting to see what happens, so no. And he walks off. Kong steps out of class and sees Flash and asks what's going on, and Flash quietly tells him nothing. Later that day, a group of thugs begin to chase down a woman that they're trying to rob. The woman mistakenly turns down a dead-end alley and the thugs start to surround her. As one pulls out a knife, his hand gets webbed up and Peter calls out from the shadows that they must be real happy being walking cliches, not even a care in the world. Peter jumps out wearing a sweater and jeans and the thugs just stare at him. With no one moving, Peter asks, what? And the leader of the group asks, who are you supposed to be, Spider-Man? Where's the costume? Peter tells him that his mom is washing it for him and the leader lunges forward. Everyone follows behind him, so Peter grabs and knocks the group out while throwing them all into a corner. After webbing the group up, Peter goes back to check on the woman and she just points at his eye. He notices that one of his lenses fell out of his mask and he tells everyone not to move. It's a white sliver of glass. A short while later, after trying to fix his makeshift costume, Gwen comes downstairs asking Peter if he wants to go to a party. He tells her that they're both losers, everyone hates him, and she hates everyone, so what's the point? Gwen says they should at least try it and see if anybody else there is having fun at all. Under his breath, Peter says it's only because they're miserable, loner orphans. But Gwen stops him, telling him, screw it, we're going to that party! So as they go to the house party, it's just as Peter said, neither of them are having fun. And just as Peter gets ready to leave, he sees Liz and Mary Jane, but different. She has a haircut and it's dyed black and she's wearing skimpy little clothes. Mary Jane is in the same girl as before. So as she walks through, she sees Peter out of the corner of her eye, but she doesn't stop. He sighs, telling himself that it's time to go now. And Gwen tells him, absolutely. But no sooner does Gwen say that than a loud boom comes from outside. All of the teenagers run out of the house chanting, Jadolf! When Peter and Gwen get outside, they see a young boy standing on a smoking car, and then he begins to hold his hand up. Light begins to shine from his palm, and then suddenly another car explodes, and all of the kids begin chanting Jadolf's name. But as the teenagers call out for him to do it again, sirens begin to blare down the street. The teenagers start to scatter, and Peter and Gwen run out the back, and that's when they spot Mary Jane and Liz. Peter helps Mary Jane for being knocked over, and the four start running through the crowds. A little while later, though, everyone meets up at the bus stop, and Gwen asks what exactly happened back there. Two other girls say that the kid's name is Jadolf or something, but he goes to their school. While the girls gossip about him, Gwen spots the public bus coming their way and tells everyone to come on. As everyone gets on the bus, Peter and Mary Jane catch each other looking at one another. Mary Jane smirks, patting the seat next to her, and Peter asks, what's so funny? She leans in, whispering that it's funny that he could be home in like two seconds if he wanted, but instead he's riding the bus like the rest of them. He says about that, he may have lost his costume. But as they go on and laugh, Mary Jane reaches into her purse and pulls out a letter. When everyone gets off of their stomps, Mary Jane pulls pulls Peter aside and tells him that she's going to give him this letter that she's been holding for a while. She just wants him to read it when he gets home, not before. Peter tells her fine and she nervously hands the letter over and leaves with Liz. Afterwards, Peter rushes home to read the letter and it's a letter telling Peter how much she loves him and that she's just so scared about everything that happened around them. But she wants to find ways to communicate herself better so that they can actually make a relationship work. So she'll be waiting for him to come over if he wants. As soon as he finishes reading, he runs out of the basement and down the street to Mary Jane's house. He climbs through the window and he asks Mary Jane if she means it and she says yes. She's just so scared. 
Promise no one else is going to throw her off of a high building? Peter tells her that he promises, and the two begin to kiss. The next day at school, Peter sees some of the kids spray-painting Jadolf rules across the lockers, and he asks himself, how exactly does he rule anyway? As he goes on thinking, Mary Jane kisses Peter on the cheek and asks if everything's all right now. He tells her, of course. But while they talk, Flash asks Peter if he has a second to talk. Peter snaps at him, telling him that he really doesn't have anything to say to him, and Mary Jane adds, shouting that he should just grow up. Flash tries to continue talking, but tells them, fine, it's nothing. And as he walks away, Liz runs up shouting what's going on. She holds out her phone and says that it's her cousin who invited them to that party, and it sounds like that guy, Jadolf, is blowing up more things again. Mary Jane leans into Peter, telling him, you gotta go. But don't worry, I have at least half a costume done for you. Peter asks, what does she mean by half? And Mary Jane says that she needs exact measurements, but it's better than no costume, right? So he changes, and as he steps out, he appears to be wearing a rather loose shirt in sweatpants. And he says it is kind of embarrassing. After leaving the school, Peter swings his way through the city, following the smoke coming from Public School 44. And that's where he finds Jadolf, blowing up more cars in the school parking lot. He lands in front of him, and Jadolf stares at him for a moment and asks, what's this? Peter webs Jadolf's hands, telling him, I'm Spider-Man, and I'm about to stop you from doing something really dumb. Jadolf looks at his hands, and he begins to electrify them, burning the webbing away, telling him, you look better on TV. The cops begin to arrive, and Peter tells him, you know, totally not sticking around to have one of those trademark misunderstandings of the police, so it's time for us to get out of here. Before swinging away, Jadolf grabs Peter, asking him to take him too. They can't arrest him, he'll be sent back home. Peter tells him that's nice, and he shoots a web and starts to lift off. But before he can get very far, Jadolf grabs him by the shirt, throwing Peter off balance. The two fling into the air, and Jadolf loses his grip, and he begins to fall. Peter begins to shout, you're such an idiot, and he webs down grabbing him and flinging him onto a nearby building. As they land and tumble onto the roof, Peter asks, what the hell were you thinking? People already blame me for a bunch of stuff, I don't really need this too. Jadolf starts to get up, telling Peter that he was just just trying to teach the principal something about suspending half the football team for going to a party. And Peter asks him, um, what party? Jadolf explains that there was a party the other night, and when the principal found out what happened, he suspended half the football team. So to protest, he blew up the principal's car. And then he got carried away and blew up another one. Peter scratches his head, trying to think of a better word than idiot. Why can't he just fight Doc Ock or something? He then asks what kind of powers does he have, and Jadolf holds out his hand, telling him that he can make things explode. He just says to think, focus, and point. He then points at a barrel, and it explodes! And Peter asks, so you're a mutant? Jadolf shouts that he's not a mutant. You hear me? I'm not a mutant. They are the devil's children! Peter steps back, trying to to logically think about how such a power is even possible, and then he tells Jadolf to look. He may want to consider how he's using his powers, or maybe be more responsible with them? Jadolf asks why would he do that, and Peter shouts, what do you mean? Help people! Do something good with those powers! But before the two of them can go on, they hear gunshots and screams coming from down below. They see a store being robbed, and Peter tells Jadolf to just hold on. And as he gets ready to jump off, Jadolf says that he wants to come too, he can help! And Peter tells him no. You will be right here, so just watch. He walks into the store as the robbers are demanding money, and he tells them that they should probably just drop the money and lose the stupid masks. The man in the Captain America mask turns back shouting and he's one to talk and he fires his gunshots. The bullet shoots through, hitting the window, and one of the robbers says, man, he sucks. Peter webs the shooter, telling him, yeah, he really does suck, like standing right there. After punching out the shooter, the other robbers say that they would like to not be punched, so they just put their guns down. And then Peter says that's the kind of thugs he likes, the kind who just lay down. But before he can finish his sentence, there's an explosion knocking everyone in the building to the ground. Peter jumps up to check and makes sure that everyone's still alive, and then he runs back up to the rooftop. Jadolf asks, you like? And Peter answers by smacking him across the face, asking him what's wrong with him. He could have killed people down there. Jadolf then gets back up, telling Peter that he better step off. But while the two begin to argue again, a female voice asks them if they wouldn't mind. They would like to talk to them. The two turn back to see Jean Grey telling them that they would like to speak with them. They are the X-Men. And Kitty Pride adds, the cute ones. And Storm continues, as seen on TV. Peter whispers to Jadolf, told you that you were a mutant. As the girls continue to introduce themselves, Jean says that she's sorry if they freaked them out or anything like that, but they just needed to talk, and Peter asks why. So Jean goes on explaining that they and the other X-Men are mutant peacekeepers, and their focus is to bring peace between man and mutant, which is why they wanted to speak with Jadolf. Jadolf stares at her, trying to form words, but through his stuttering, he ends up fainting. Kitty leans down, asking if he really just fainted after being told that he was a mutant, and Peter says that he's pretty much in denial of that fact. While Storm and Kitty tend to Jadolf, Jean psychically tells Peter that he did a good job trying to talk to him. Peter shouts, what the hell was that? And Jean continues telling him that they're speaking telepathically. Just think and she can read it. Peter tells Jean that he's not sure he's very comfortable with her in his head. And she says, try not to be uncomfortable. It's really not a big deal. In fact, he's the first guy who hasn't mentally pictured her naked in six months. Peter remains quiet and Jean says, until now. Still being quiet, Peter tells her sorry, and Jean asks if he's done yet. The two go back and forth looking at each other, and Peter says, okay, done. 
And Jean doesn't say anything. Peter says, okay, now I'm done. And then Jadal starts to wake back up asking what's going on. He looks up and Jean telepathically asks if he's okay. So he screams and passes back out. And Jean tells everyone, okay, that one was her fault. Kitty asks, what are they supposed to do? And Storm says that they're not sure if he's even a mutant yet. Peter asks, what? But as he does, Jean psychically calls Professor Xavier. Suddenly, the giant head of Charles appears and he tells everyone that normally they would go through the proper authorities for this, but it's a special case. However, with him passed out, it is technically kidnapping. While Jean decides to bring him in, Peter asks if that was really Professor Charles Xavier, and Storm tells him that he's already gone. Peter then asks, how does she know? Maybe he's pretend hanging up and staying on the line. As the girls bring Jadolf onto their aircraft, they ask Peter if he'd like to come, and he tells them, you know what? Sure. The jet soars into the sky, and Peter asks Jean if she actually knows how to fly a plane, to which she tells him, legally no. He then asks if she's making a funny, and she tells him yes. But while everyone talks, Jadolf slowly begins to wake back up, and he looks around. Jean senses his movement and shouts that he's awake, and everyone turns back to tell him to relax, but Jadolf shouts for everyone to stay back, and he creates another explosion in the ship. The back of the airship begins to open up, and everyone gets pulled out. Storm flies out, trying to help glide the ship, but with the speed of the aircraft, everyone starts to get sucked out of it. A little while later, Peter begins to wake up and find himself in a bed. He looks around to see Charles, and he introduces Peter to his X-Men, and Beast quietly says, Uncanny. Peter shouts, wait, what? Storm quickly explains what happened. It was that she helped Kitty guide the plane before crashing. Jean then flew out, grabbing Jadolf and saving him just at the last second before he splattered on the ground. Peter blankly stares, and Storm shouts, and you're welcome. As Peter processes everything, he realizes that he's not wearing his mask. Why did they take his mask off? He was trying to keep his identity secret, and no one seems to be respecting that. Now everyone knows that he's just plain old Peter Parker. Kitty smiles and says, actually, we didn't know your name until now. After getting dressed and putting back on his mask, Peter heads over to the medical room to see Jadolf to make sure that he's okay. When he does, Jadolf tells Peter that he should totally check out what they did to his nipple. Peter says that he looks uh, a lot happier than last time, and Charles says that he gave him a happy thought. Peter asks Charles if that's even ethical, and Charles tells him honestly no, but he did just lose an aircraft because of this kid. Charles then goes on to tell him that the reason that they wanted to speak with him is because that through Cerebro they can track mutants, but with Jadolf they couldn't, which has never happened before. In fact, it didn't even register to him as human, which leads one to believe that he may have been subjected to some undeserving genetic experiment. So with that being the case, what they need to do is find out who did this, and more importantly, why. Peter then says, alright, so what are you gonna do with him? Charles tells him that they'll present him to a couple of scientific organizations, and they'll present their findings to the UN so that they can basically finally stop the countries that are turning a blind eye to inhumane mutilations. This is really a smoking gun. And Peter corrects him, he. Charles asks what, and Peter points at Jadolf saying, he. We're talking about a human. Peter then goes on to ask if Jadolf doesn't want to be a part of their agenda. He's already a mutant phobic. Charles tells him that at this point, it's not up to him. There are much bigger considerations. Peter says that he's going to try and say that this guy deserves a shot at normal life. And Beast leans in asking, define normal. So after thinking about it, Peter turns around shouting, define this! And he punches Beast! Peter then grabs Jadolf, kicking Cyclops in the head, and he runs out of the lab! Colossus tries to stop him, but Peter just tackles through him and out the window! As he lands, Peter sees Charles standing there asking, what good would that do? Peter then snaps back to reality, back in the lab, saying, What? That would... I... Just a thought. Charles then tells Peter that he's sure that he just read about his work. He knows what him and the X-Men stand for, so he can promise that Jadolf will be treated with respect. Kitty asks Peter if he's going to be okay with all of this, and he tells her that he guesses. She then asks if he needs a ride back to Queens, and Peter shouts, Oh God! What time is it? A short while later, Peter walks across his lawn into his basement, thinking about how he really needs to stop meeting people that he looks up to. They're all starting to seem kind of crazy. Actually, he probably shouldn't be thinking that. What if Charles Xavier is listening? Before he can wonder any further, May stops him telling him they really need to talk. And that concludes also Spider-Man number seven. It's kind of a filler, but it was cool to see the ultimate X-Men in this universe, and that's how they are there, right in the comic strip. You get to enjoy that. Yes, you do. Don't forget you can subscribe to this channel to keep up to date with your Saturday morning Ultimate Spider-Man videos, and you can also follow me on Twitter and Instagram where we can talk about whatever you want. I'll see you next time right here.